Hi everyone, I thought I would vlog today because I'm selling books uh, at an event in Canterbury. It's a food festival called Canterbury's Cooking and I'm going along with a group of authors. We normally um, do like a, an author's tent at a food festival in Hythe, but this is our first time in Canterbury and I'm really excited. I think, well, I hope <laughs> it's going to go really well. Um, Canterbury is a city, so it's a big place. You've got residents, you've got tourists, you've got students. They've all started to um, uh, move in <laughs> over the last week or two. So there should be lots of people which is a good thing when you're trying to sell things. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I thought I would show you my setup and introduce you to some of the other authors. Um, I'm a little bit, I don't know, tired. I had a gig last night and um, I thought, <laughs> I thought that'd be fine. It'd be fine to do a gig and then get up and go and sell books all day. So I'm a little bit tired and a little bit, um, <laughs> look at those bags, wow. Um, but it's fine, it's it's absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, I may start to kind of um, crash at about two o'clock. Um, yeah, no, it's great. I am really, really looking forward to it and I think it's going to be a good day. So I'm going to bring you along with me. I'm all ready, I'm about to make myself some lunch and load the car. I do always try to take lunch, especially at a food festival. It's really easy to spend <laughs> the money that you've made on things. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take some food with me. I might buy myself a coffee or something. But yeah, I'm gonna get ready, get in the car, and then I will probably see you again to show you my setup. Right, I am in the car. Band gear is out, book gear is in. I've got rocks <laughs> and clothes pegs because it's really windy and I'm not sure how exposed we're going to be. I don't know if we're in a gazebo or around a gazebo or or what so I've got I've got provisions um, ready to go I'm in Canterbury just shuttling my stuff heading back for the second trip um, you might be able to hear it's quite windy do you reckon I can get all this last stuff just in one more trip I think I can <laughs> um, I've got this stack of boxes and I reckon they're gonna go on top of here and that box. Keep all of my books in boxes in here as well. Um, it means everything's protected, easy to carry. I'm gonna try and do this just in one last go. Backpack on my back, wheelie stuff wheeling. Yeah. A vent. I've got my pull up. I'm not quite happy with my setup. How are you keeping yours up? <laughs> um, it's just, it's just skill. <laughs> Good skill. <laughs> got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I made some bunting. A stable table. A stable table. These are Debbie Jones's lovely books. So you don't write. Oh no, you do write as Debbie Jones on this one. I do. This one I wrote as D.A. Kent. Yes. With, with, with a colleague. This is a real life genealogical mystery which we helped to solve. If anyone's ever watched Air Hunters. I'll link all these below. Set in so cool. 1948 in London. Very nice. Paris, Naples, and down to Haifa. How cool. And then this is your new one. This is so interesting. Tell me the story of this. Dan Hawk, psychic detective, uh, came about as a result of a food festival in Hive. Oh, just really? like this one. <laughs> it was hammering down. Absolutely hammering down. Was that the one I came to it after was. COVID? It, was. it did really hammer I down. ended up having to stand in at the real ale bar where people were desperately sheltering <laughs> from this rain. And I thought I'd double up and sell some books as well. Yeah. This guy turns up wearing an Elvis costume. He's an Elvis um, impersonator and singer. He bought a copy of Dateline Hyper. Yeah. Read it. And the next thing, next event. Yeah. He said, I loved your book. Could you 
adapt my screenplay, which he'd oh, wow. done for Dan Hawke, into yeah. a novella. Wow. And in fact, it is going to be on the big screen at the Quarter House on the 8th of October. So that's the Quarter House in Folkestone. I will share it because I've seen you sharing links. So I'll pop that in the description of this as yes, well. Yes, yes. So, so cool. it, it, it's uh, uh, that's him on the front. I right. <laughs> It's about a policeman uh -huh. who has left the force, become a writer, done a successful series of books mm -hmm. about a character called Mr. Pumpkinhead. Okay. He's a bit of a vigilante. Unfortunately, Mr. Pumpkinhead seems to have come to life, but not in a good way. Oh, okay. And he's going round randomly killing people. Oh, wow. And so there's Dan Hawke yeah. um, minding his own business. Uh, doing a book signing and suddenly he is called upon to help solve the murder. Well that sounds really fun and then yeah. we've got all these anthologies. Aha! Yes. I'm in this one. You are, <laughs> yes, with some grounding, yes. Is Africa. that still raising money for... It is. It is. Uh, it raises money for the Sean Cliff Trust mm -hmm. um, and they uh, look after the history of the barracks up at Folkestone, which yeah. was built in 1798. Wow. Uh, if you ever get the chance to go on one of their tours, just I do it. I have been. I will. Have a look. Have a look on the website and just do it. Yeah. It also raises money for the Hive Environmental Community Trust. And there's a lot of theming in the book about that, isn't there? There is. Uh, there's history, there's um, environment, mm. there are wonderful animals something for everybody in yeah, there and sure. uh, I've been told it speaks to the heart I like it I've read it and I've read I've read this one Doorways to see yes, yeah that's yes. nice set um, set in on under in some cases <laughs> uh, the, these are iconic beach huts so again that well. goes back um, way into history mm -hmm. and then it goes forward again um, into the future and these are all by the local writing group, which They're I'm not a member of, but I'm very grateful to be invited to the selling oh, event. Oh, you are, you are an honorary member. I am. <laughs> Ghosts by the Sea. Uh, that, that was written during the very dark days of lockdown. Was that the first anthology? That was the first one we okay. did. And you can... Uh, this is really cool, actually. You can um, guide yourself round using a map at the beginning of the book. Oh, wow. You can guide That's a yourself around all the locations. Oh, wow. And there are quite a few locations, so you don't have to do it all at once. Yeah. But again, oh, we've got stories set um, at the drama school in the old building, mm -hmm. um, in uh, the Grand, mm -hmm. outside the Grand, um, on the Barduct in Ford Road, which has got a heck of a lot of history and uh, down uh, by the Anthony Gormley statue. Yeah. So, yeah, that's great fun. That's Definitely fantastic. do the walk if you get the chance. Yeah. This is our latest baby. That's the new one. Oh, yeah. That's a hefty one as well. Lots that of writers. That is quite a tome. Yeah, there nice. are um, over, over 30, 33. Wow. Um, Journeys by the Sea. So this lovely, is lovely. Um, any form of journey, really. It could even be a metaphorical mm -hmm. one, but mostly it's about Folkestone yeah. before it was a port, way before it was a port in some cases, as it started to become a port and as the ferries began to go mm -hmm. to and from, and then after it stopped being a port. Oh, okay. So again, across the centuries, yeah. and in all sorts of methods of transport, boat, train, um, Shanks's pony in some case, <laughs> and uh, one of our writers, Nick Hilditch, even has his story on an airship. Wow. I mean, these anthologies, the, the writing is so varied. It is. You know, I found um, that there were some stories that really spoke to me and I enjoyed and others that weren't my thing, but that's the lovely thing with an anthology. Oh, it is, because someone, someone's going to find something totally different Absolutely. in each one and you can dip in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, those are so lovely. This is my hero, Charlotte Holmes. You see what I did there? <laughs> when she Fabulous. gets together with her friend, Joanne Watson, things really take off. They catch crooks and she's constantly putting her friend Joanne Watson into terrible danger. <laughs> In this one, they've been thrown into the sea by the crooks. 
That's and, so uh, hard. They're in the middle of the North Sea with no help available. Oh, right. Because okay. how many have you got in this series now? Five. One, two, three, five. five. In the wow. Series and one in the computer. Fab. There we go. Um, this one is a science fiction story about yeah. a girl who swaps with a girl from the 19th century. So she wakes up one morning and finds herself in a completely different body. And that the girl from fun. the 19th century comes to modern times and thinks she's died and gone to hell. You know? <laughs> it's only London in the 21st century. Um, Six Kids Safe Planet Earth is my most recent That's one. That's a new one. Officially released. And uh, the six children of the Chang family come down stairs one morning to breakfast to find that their mother isn't their mother anymore. Oh wow! <laughs> she looks like her, but she doesn't behave like her. She's been replaced by an alien, so they have to rescue their parents, stop the, the invasion of Earth, and uh, still get home in time for tea. Fantastic! No pressure. Well, there we are. And uh, finally, Teenage Spy. Yeah. Um, our hero, who's a bit of a geek and doesn't have many friends, wakes up one morning to find a girl in his bedroom. <laughs> she's a teenage cadet spy on a mission and she's been betrayed. She just jumped through the first window she could see <laughs> and she more or less kidnaps him and takes him on an adrenaline fueled ride all Fantastic. over England um, to catch the mole that betrayed her. It's set in the 1960s at the height of the Cold War, so we have shootouts and car chasers and so on. Very action packed. It is indeed. They are fab. So they're all sort of middle grade. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're, we're talking um, nine, eight, uh, yeah. or nine up to about 14. Fantastic. So Hi. tell me about these. This is my first novel. That's beautiful. A Sense for Silver. And it is a mystery set on the Kent coast and then in Paris. Lovely. Especially on the Rue d'Aguerre, which is France's, which is Paris's best food street. Oh, okay. So although it's a mystery with lots of twists and turns, um, it also has a lot about food in it. Oh, this wind! Gosh. Yes, so it's foody as well as mystery. Yes. So that I'm even giving a. Oh, yeah. that's fun. A recipe for. <laughs> I love Barbara. that! Well, let's not give your secrets. <laughs> oh, that's, fine. that's lovely. That's, that, I give that away. Yeah. That arrives in chapter seven, I think. Uh, there's a mysterious silver box ah. um, later in the book. Oh, how and lovely! Of course she learns French because when she goes in shops as a schoolgirl, <laughs> she, every time she speaks French, no matter how many mistakes, the women in the it's shops give her free chocolates. Yeah, oh, how lovely! And that happened to me, so that's why. <laughs> so I put it in for Ellen as well. Ah, they are so lovely, Lynn. Those, on, that cover on, is It's beautiful. on Amazon. I will link it. I'm yeah. going to link everybody's bit. So yeah. And there's some great take reviews a look. on Instagram as well. Fabulous! I need to follow you, I don't think I do. That's so lovely. Thank you. It is picking up, I think. What do you think? How it, you're doing well, aren't you, Paul? Yes. It's a Sunday, so. Yeah, yeah. I saw the overall It's dying now, though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Rough, and now it's dying. There was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the sun's come out. So nice. I am the last one standing, first one here, last one to leave always, um, but the tunes have started so um, I'm just rocking out having a lovely time. I'm back in the car <laughs> and I'm all done for the day and a bit out of breath from shuttling all of the things. I don't know um, <laughs> what kind of clips you got of today um, but hopefully it gave you a, a sense of an event. Um, didn't do very well, didn't sell many books. Um, I'm gonna stick some stuff on social media later. You know what, if you have made it this far, <laughs> I will stick a discount in the description box below. Uh, I'll have to have a look at my website and see what I can do, but I will, I'll do something. Um, free UK shipping or a percentage off or something like that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll put I'll put it here. So whatever it says here, that's the discount, and I'll put it in the description below. Um, 
yeah and I think I'll put something on my social media just to see if I can use photos and videos of the day to you know make the most out of things that is something I would recommend doing actually you can sometimes get a couple more sales and it's all very appreciated but yeah I didn't I didn't do so well um sold some books just about made a profit on the day uh yeah I need to go home <laughs> so thank you for watching um I hope that was helpful or useful or something have a lovely week and I'll see you all soon take care